running pretty hot. That's spitting water out of the top there. Doesn't seem to be circulating the water properly. It looks like we've got a blockage in the radiator. That's looking a lot better in there. Hopefully the, uh, the water will get through now. Everything's staying cool now. Problem solved, as simple as that. Just a blocked up radiator. The fun continues. It's not overheating now, but it's, um, I think it's got a fuel problem because it's, it's just stalled on me. Um, it was sort of starting to surge and then it finally gave up. The tank is filthy. Okay, that's got it. It's flying a bit better now, but it's still 100%. There we go. That's more like it. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. So that's pumped all the air out now. Today I'm going to start working on the old Hoff loader, um, give it a bit of maintenance and fix a few things. Um, you might remember when I first got it, it was overheating after about 8 minutes running. So I solved that by cleaning the radiator out, but now it's uh, running too cool and not getting up to temperature. So I noticed there was no thermostat in there, so I've picked up another one and we'll put that in and see if that helps. And also uh, the thermostat on the intake manifold. Um, isn't working so we'll look into that and uh, try and reinstate that because it is actually impossible to start without ether at the moment so hopefully if I can get that thermostat going it'll make it a lot easier to start and yeah just basically go over the whole machine and give it a good service and uh, lube it up That's a bypass thermostat, so that's got to be the right length to block up that end, and that's pretty good. I'll just clean out that recess so that it fits in properly. I'm guessing they took this thermostat out to try and solve the overheating issues, um, and it obviously didn't work it's just to block radiator, but. Um, it kind of needs a thermostat in there to regulate the temperature. The engine seems to be running too cold without one, so I'll get a new one in there and hopefully the, the engine can run at the proper temperature then. Perfect. non-hardening sealant on there so it uh, prevents any leaks and makes it easier to get off next time as well. That should let the engine get up to temperature now and uh, it'll run more efficiently I think so that's one job. All right I'll take the thermostat out and test it. Um, so with these you feed fuel into the back here and uh, you feed it 12 volts. It heats up a coil there which opens a valve and lets a bit of diesel in and just burns it like a little blowtorch. And that heats everything up in there and it should be easier to start if I can get it going again. But there's probably a reason why they uh, stopped using it but we'll test it anyway. Let's see what sort of resistance we've got in there. No, there's nothing there. I think that has has blown. Let's see if that comes out. Yeah, it seems to be quite a clean contact on there. Uh, all right. Okay, 
so I'm guessing the element is supposed to be soldered to that, maybe? It's a brand new one, I think. It's got a number on there. Eight five four one oh six. We'll have a look for one of those. All right, I've bought a new thermostat for it. It's Forty dollars. That's brand new, so that should be good. I'll give that thermostat a little try. I've got a battery there with some jumper leads on it. There shouldn't be any spark there. Oh yes, I see. That's a faulty one. You can see it sparking there. It's because that's broken there, so it's not contacting properly. I probably could try and weld it, but um, then I'm, I'm definitely going to void the warranty if I do that. So I might just try and send that back. Get another one, damn it. Yep, she's glowing red hot in there. Basically, I've got a plumber diesel line in there. I think I'll just tear it off from there for now um, after that pump to supply the diesel, and then I'll wire up a switch to that so that I can um, push a button and use that just before I start try and start it. So it'll make a little flame in there and heat everything up. All right, I've got some new fuel filters here. Hopefully, they're the right size. Yeah, there's a bit of crud on that one. It's not too bad, but you can see a bit of rust and crap in there, so yeah, we'll get those changed. Make sure there's no bits of metal in that thread. Looks okay. There's a bit of foil around that ceiling surface. Good, it's a few filters done. Don't tell the missus I'm using a good knife. See how that pumps. Here we go. Yep, all right, off. Thank you. That's good, works well. Yeah. Oh, it seems to be holding. Yep, that'll do it. Turn off. Yep, it seems to be holding pressure. Alright, so in theory, when I connect these leads, it should heat up that coil, which opens the little valve in there at a certain temperature, and we should see a bit of flame coming out of there, hopefully. Ah, there we go. It works. That's good. So that all works okay. Screw that in now and try it out, see if it starts a bit better. Now, I wonder if there's an old switch in there. 
And that's probably it there, but that, that's gone. So I have to get another heavy switch or a big relay um, for that. But for the time being, I think I can just short it onto there and just hold it down. <laughs> Temporary fix, but yeah, it'll work. seconds oh, straight away straight away that's so much better oh that's a big improvement that's the first time I've started it cold without using ether so that's brilliant all right we'll see what sort of state that air filter is in It's actually got a spider web in it, so I'll get another one of those. <laughs> uh, it almost looks like it's collapsed a little bit. It's bent in. Because that filter's had a hole in it, there is some dust in there in the intake pipe, so I think I'll take that off and give it a bit of a clean. that had got past the, the filter. We don't need that going through the engine. nice and clean in there so there's no dust going to get in the engine and put that new air filter in there now we'll breathe a bit better now all right I noticed when I was um, driving it that the hydraulic oil was getting quite hot so we'll check the filter in there and see what's going on um, I'm hoping it's just a, a blocked up filter ah. oil returns through there yeah there's supposed to be a filter there you can see there's a thread there so They've obviously taken the filter out at some stage. I suppose they're working on the theory that if it doesn't have a filter, the filter can't get blocked. It just means there's nothing to catch all the particles and uh, everything is going to wear out quicker. Damn it. That means uh, the problem might be more serious than a blocked filter. I just have to try and find a nut for the top of that. I've had a rummage through my nuts and bolts and the only thing I could find is this old pipe fitting. It's the right thread. But I'll have to put a washer down there first. That should do the job. Get that down. Put a little bit of compression on there. All right, we'll drain this hydraulic tank and um, see if there's a suction filter in there. Okay, 
so there is the suction filter in there. The bottom. That is fairly clogged up, so that might be the problem why it's overheating. Alright. Let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, look at that. That could well be the problem. It's like a black tarry gunk. It actually looks in pretty good condition. There's no big cuts in it. Right, that looks all good. It's intact. tank is filthy so I'll give it a bit of a wipe down in there. There's quite a bit of water in there too. Okay, I think that'll do it. Oh, that's gross. That's um, fairly clean in there now, so that'll be okay. the water out Toby. Mm -hmm. yep. well. okay. That's all seated properly. Hopefully that filter keeps it that way. Mm -hmm. That new filter. The hydraulic system needs clean oil. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it wears things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is nice new oil. But we don't want to fill the tank right up because when we pull the hydraulics in, the tank would get too full. Yep. And it might go bang. So we don't want to fill it right up. We want to leave a bit of space. So just fill it over halfway. And that should be good. Well, it's sinked. Uh, Oil yeah, sink. That's all going in that tank, isn't it? Yeah. That's where we need it. Alright, we'll check the oil and the diffs. See if there's anything in there. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, it's got oil. Well, it does have oil, but it's quite muddy. So, yeah. we'll put some new oil in there. You know, someone in Tractor Tom just got his, his face all covered with oil. <laughs> with black oil. Oh, yeah. Look at the state of that. Oh, yeah. It's like it's mud. so bad. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, that's got a magnet on it, I think. Hmm, maybe. And that's what catches all the bits of metal, you see. Some 140 weight oil in there, nice and thick. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we just want to get the oil up to that bung there, bung. where it's going in, so about halfway. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's 
one down. Oh, that one's even worse. It's kind of an awkward spot to get into the uh, sump plug there, but I've got it leaning forward so all the oil should come down in front of the fuel tank. So, let's see how we go. Which is your favourite spanner? Um, this one. That big one. Yeah. <laughs> if I have big bolts for my machines, I'll just lose this big. Yeah, man, that's right. You won't need that on your little bike, though, will you? Mm. It's only for big tractors and things. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Here goes the oil. A little bit close. Yeah. We'll just let that drain out for a while, man. Yeah. We'll put some... That is a lot of oil. Ah, it's yucky. We'll put some nice new stuff in it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Make sure there's no swarf in the threads. That one's pretty clean. I'm going to get the oil on the top there. Luckily someone has cut a hole in the lid. So I should be able to get a funnel down there. Alright, let's check the oil on those final drives. It looks like the plugs haven't been out for many years since it's had a paint job anyway. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Metallic black paste. Lovely. I think what I'll do is put some diesel in there run it for a wee while and then flush it out and put new oil in it so i'll just put a couple of hundred mil on each one and then run it for a while and um and that should loosen everything up Right, we'll put 140 weight oil in the finals. You can tell it's done a lot of hours because there's like a lot of metal flakes um, sitting on this magnet. That hasn't been changed for years. Oh, 
Right, that's all the final drives flushed out and filled with new oil. So that definitely needed doing. That oil was filthy, man. Now yeah, we'll do the uh, grease points, I think. Quite a few of them. Pretty sure there's one down there. Looks like we'll be replacing a lot of these grease nipples. Some of them are just rusted and uh, can't get any grease in there. That was a mission. The head on it was rusted and I couldn't get a, a spanner on it so I had to whack it around with a cold chisel. <laughs> that was the worst grease nipple I've ever had to deal with. Anyway, got there in the end. I really hope they're not all that bad. Ah, that's more like it. Two down, 30 to go. Rear axle pivot. Can't get any grease into that pivot point, so I think I'll jack the rear end up and just try and open the joint up a little bit. Because all the weight of the machine is on that pin it was closing the grease hole so i had to jack up the rear end and um yeah that's opened up the gap and let the grease in but, uh, yeah, that was that was a hard one so it should be an easy job we're sending into a major just through the grease points because they haven't been done very often and they just seized up so I can't get any grease in them so well, it should be a 10 minute job to grease it it's, it's taken me over an hour already and I've only done like four of them it's crazy probably just dry grease and um yeah the grease isn't going through Hasn't had any maintenance for a long time. That's better. Now it's going in. been damaged at some stage and the grease won't go in. That's going to come down on my face, isn't it?
but um phew oh well that took a while what should have taken 15 minutes ended up taking about three hours because i had to pull a lot of those old grease points out and replace them because they were so uh like clogged up with dry old grease and rust so yeah but next time should be a bit easier hopefully so she's all lubed up now um all ready to go back to work i think the only thing i haven't done yet is the oil and filter for the transmission i'm waiting for a filter for that so i'll do that when it arrives uh, it's got plenty of oil and the oil looks clean so um, it'll be okay until the new filter arrives so i'll give it a wee run now and see how it feels it should be a bit smoother with all the new grease and oils and filters done see how she goes Right, that'll make it easier to get the rounds up to the log splitter. They're just a little bit too big for the uh, splitter to lift up, so if I can get those to the level of the bench, I should be able to just roll them onto the bench and split them. Man, there's a lot of firewood in there. I'll probably just take it maybe up to somewhere there and then try and mill the rest of that. about fills up the truck with one scoop it's all running a lot better now it's starting instantly with that new thermostat and um, everything feels a lot smoother with the, the new oils and filters um, the engine's staying about the right temperature now and it's actually smoking a lot less now I guess because the engine's getting up to temperature and um, it's, it's running more efficiently I've solved the overheating hydraulic oil problem like I've been running it for about an hour and that's just 
just warm whereas before it would have been almost boiling over in that time and I think all that was was the suction filter was clogged up and it was having a hard time getting oil to the pump which was uh, creating quite a bit of heat so yeah just a little bit of simple maintenance and it's a fairly decent machine now job done catch you later guys